Hello and welcome to this basics episode on novelty. An in-depth look at locomotives of the early railways. Novelty was built to take part in the Rainhill Trials of October 1829. She was built by the international duo of John Braithwaite of London and Captain Johan Eriksson of Sweden. Braithwaite was part of the London Engineering Establishment, the same establishment which had ridiculed George Stevenson's claim to have invented the miner's safety lamp, and then later said he could never put a railway across Chat Moss. Ericsson had been one of those annoying child prodigies, and he had served both in the Swedish Navy and the Swedish Army. Something of a polymath, he is today best remembered as the designer of the USS Monitor, the first turreted warship to see action. The third member of the team was the Anglo-Irish engineer Charles Blacker Vignoles, another establishment figure who had already clashed with George Stevenson on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. Vignoles provided much of the copy and the technical illustrations for the influential London Mechanics magazine. The fourth and unofficial member of Team Novelty was J.C. Robertson, the editor of the Mechanics magazine. It was the voice of the London Engineering Establishment, and by declaring Novelty the people's choice, Robertson was referring to the right sort of people, those who were well-educated, well-spoken, and knew how to use a cake fork, and of course read his magazine. George Stevenson or Timothy Ackworth were not the right sort of people at all. Ah, they weren't northern, I eat greatly than those. Novelty was built in the short space of seven weeks, and her design was based upon that of Braithwaite and Ericsson's existing steam fire pumps. In fact, she may have been the steam pump named Novelty, given a different lease of life. So let's look at the design. The unusual boiler was remarkably efficient, despite all the peculiarities of its design. It consists of two elements, an upright and a horizontal. The upright element was cylindrical, and contained within it a cylindrical copper firebox, the top of which formed a long tube leading to a hopper at the top, where coke could be fed through an airtight trap door. Experiences from the replica of novelty, however, show that the crews stoking the fire suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning using this trap door. The horizontal element consisted of a water-filled cylinder through which a serpentine copper tube passed three times before exiting. In order to provide sufficient air for the coke fire to burn properly, a blast of compressed air was provided by a pair of bellows driven by eccentrics. By means of different valves, this air could be directed above or below the fire grate. As the engine travelled faster, so the flow of air from the bellows increased, making the fire hotter so the boiler could raise more steam. However, experimental data derived from the replica of novelty shows that whilst her cylinders could generate 6 horsepower at the rails, the bellows required at least 6.5 horsepower to work them. In other words, Novelty was using more energy to work its bellows than moving herself along the track. Experience of the replica has also shown that the fire was very prone to clinkering. There was no way to clean the fire or the fire grate, and the narrow bore flue tube through the horizontal element of the boiler became easily clogged with carbon, and it was impossible to clean it out. Novelty had two vertical cylinders, which drove a crank axle via bell cranks. Exhaust steam was simply vented into the atmosphere, so Novelty ran along shrouded in a pall of steam. The wheels were not coupled, making her a 2-2-0 with a crank axle leading. The wheels were to the patent of Theodore Jones of London. They have a cast iron hub with offset wrought iron spokes and a wrought iron rim and tyre. The fact that they look like giant bicycle wheels is because that's what they are, and they work on the same principle. These wheels, however, have very narrow treads, which presented problems with keeping her on the track. Water was carried in a tank slung underneath, making her the first tank engine. Novelty was dispatched from London to Liverpool by canal by Pickfords. 
Yes, those Pickfords with the big blue lorries. Sadly, she had not had any trial runs. There were no railways in London on which to try her, even if there had been time. At Rain Hill on the first day, running light engine without any load, she attained the impressive speed of 28 miles per hour. This was the fastest any locomotive had run and was perhaps the highlight of her career. The following day, she underwent her first official trial, but everything came to a shuddering halt when there was an explosion of inflammable gas in her bellows. The judges granted Braithwaite and Ericsson extra time to fix this. Whilst in order to entertain the crowds, Rocket was run up and down for everyone's amusement. Having been repaired and now on her second official run, sadly something else broke. The valve between the water pump and the boiler had been left closed and the water feed pipe burst under the pressure. Yet again, Braithwaite and Ericsson were granted more time to carry out repairs. In this case, an extra week to effect repairs to the damaged engine. Yet, an enthusiastic Braithwaite had, without Ericsson's knowledge, visited the three judges in Liverpool and brought forward by a number of days the final trial of novelty. In the words of one of the judges, John Erpeth Rastrick, when he arrived on the 14th of October 1829, he found novelty still in pieces. All the joints of the boiler had yet to be made. Clearly, in his opinion, she was in no fit state to go anywhere. Yet Braithwaite was desirous to put novelty to the test. So it was, just after lunchtime on the 14th of October, that novelty was finally back together. The fire was lit, and at a quarter past one, steam was raised. Everything was ready. This was it. This is what everyone had been waiting for. The people's choice on trial, ready to win the grand prize. She began this final run at 25 minutes past one o'clock, but at the stroke of two, she disappeared in a cloud of steam and hot water. One of those hastily made boiler joints had blown out. It was all over. The boiler would take at least another week to repair. Ericsson conceded the field. But this wasn't the end for novelty. Ericsson continued to tinker and work on her through the following weeks. Recognising the power loss from the bellows, he added a third cylinder so as to drive them by steam. And it worked. Under trial in January 1831, she ran flawlessly, capable of moving a load of ten times her own weight, far more than the Rainhill stipulation, at a speed of eight miles an hour. The design was clearly sound, and the confident Braithwaite and Ericsson proposed to build two even larger super novelties for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. But the less said about those two expensive failures, the better. But what of novelty? Well, she was sold to an engineer from Wigan called Dolgleish, and he rebuilt her in 1833 with a new multi-tubular boiler, new cylinders and new wheel. He presented the four wheels and two cylinders to John Melling, the locomotive superintendent of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. The four wheels and one cylinder came into the possession of the Science Museum and were incorporated into a static replica of novelty built in 1928. The second cylinder is now on display at Rainhill Library. A working replica of novelty was built by Flying Scotsman Enterprises Limited in 1979 to appear at the Rocket 150 event in 1980. Nowadays in Sweden, it returned to the UK in 2002 to take part in a reenactment of the Rennhill trials for the BBC TV programme Time Watch, and in 2005 to commemorate the 175th anniversary of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. So those are the basics on novelty the most technically advanced and theoretically brilliant of all the Rainhill trial entrants, but also the most complicated. As George Stevenson said, she suffered from too much innovation, and ultimately she was not a practical design for everyday railway use. Do you agree with George's assessment? Comment below. If you have enjoyed this video, and I hope you have, please like, share and subscribe. 
If you'd like to find out more about Novelty and her builders, check out my book, The Rainhill Trials by Amberley Books.